This is a tutorial on modeling using exponential and logarithmic functions. If we want to create an exponential or a logarithmic function that models some data that we're given, we won't usually do this by hand. Creating exponential and logarithmic models is very difficult. So typically we use some sort of graphing or regression or modeling software or utility to do part of the work for us. Here in this tutorial, we're going to use the software that comes with the Texas Instrument brand of calculators. Typically with the 80 series, so the TI-81, 82, 83, 84, etc. Now if you have one of these Texas Instrument calculators but you're not sure how to use it, Textbook Tactics has provided you with several tutorials on how to use your calculator. Every subject on textbook tactics from algebra to pre-calculus has these calculator tutorials available. They are under the chapter TI Calculator Tutorials and the different videos to watch well the ones that are important for this tutorial would be making regression lines, graphing regression lines, graphing data, and zoom features. So if you're not familiar with your calculator, try watching some of these tutorials before watching this tutorial. Or feel free to use whatever modeling software that you have available. Now it doesn't matter what type of modeling software you use, the steps for creating an exponential or logarithmic model are always the same. And the first step is to take your data and create a scatter plot. Once you've created your scatter plot, you look at the data and you try to draw a trend line that approximates that data. Once you've drawn your trend line, you want to determine the possible models for that trend line or what type of equations would look like that trend line if we decided to graph those equations. And then lastly, use some sort of regression tool or software that will determine the constant values that are in that model. So for example, if I had an exponential model and my exponential equation looked like y is equal to a times b to the x, we would use a regression software to tell us what a and b were equal to. We chose this exponential model because our trend line that we found earlier would look like an exponential graph. In this tutorial, we're only going to be modeling exponential and logarithmic functions. There are three types of exponential and logarithmic functions that we're going to be modeling. So let's see what they look like. Here in my first scatter plot, I have several points here. And if I wanted to draw a trend line that approximated these points, I would draw one that looks like this. In the scatter plot below it, here I would draw a trend line that looks something like this. These two trend lines mimic an exponential function. So they have an equation that looks like y is equal to a times b to the x. Now a lot of modeling software when it does an exponential model it creates one that looks like y is equal to a times e to the kx. This equation will give you a similar graph as y is equal to a times b to the x. The Texas Instrument calculators build models that are in this form. So this is the form that we're going to talk about in this tutorial. Now let's look at an example of a logarithmic scatter plot. Here's my data and if I drew a trend line that looks something like this I might think that this is a logarithmic model or if I drew it like this I might think that this is a logarithmic model 
And here's my equation for a logarithmic model, so my regression software would tell me the values of a and b. Now you may notice that some of the logarithmic models and exponential models look very similar. To tell the difference between them, you have to remember that with exponential functions, there are horizontal asymptotes. That means there are y values in an exponential model that cannot be reached or you cannot have y equal to whatever that horizontal asymptote is equal to. So if you're ever measuring something and you cannot have a y value, say a population value that would be negative, that wouldn't make any sense, you may consider using an exponential model. Now logarithmic models have a vertical asymptote. They have an x value that you cannot reach or cross. So if you're measuring something, say time, and negative time wouldn't make sense, then you might try a logarithmic model. Now our last type of model is a logistic model. And logistic scatter plots would look something like these two examples. Typically, your trend line would look sort of like an S. What's important with logistic models is that they have a minimum value and they have a maximum value. So if what you're measuring has a minimum and a maximum value and your scatter plot looks something like this, you may consider using a logistic model. So now let's try looking at an example. In 1968, George Romero created the film Night of the Living Dead. And since that time, creatures like zombies have appeared in many books, films, and other media. So our data below illustrates an example for a fictitious zombie apocalypse. So let's create a model using this data that will estimate the number of zombies at any given time. And then let's predict how many zombies there will be on day 14. So here is our data. We start with one zombie in day one, and by day seven, we have over 13,000 zombies. If we're going to use a Texas instrument calculator to do this, our first step is to hit this stat button here, which will give you a window that looks something like this. You want to select the edit function and it will give you several empty lists. Whatever you want to be your x variable, put that data in this column. So day one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. In the second column, place whatever you want to be on your y-axis. So one zombie, nine zombies, 34 zombies, etc., down to 13,423 zombies. Your next step is to create the scatter plot. Once your data is in your modeling software, for this calculator, we're going to hit the second button, and then we're going to hit this y is equal to, because we want the statistics plot or the stat plot. So if you hit second and this key, you'll get a screen that looks like this. For our first plot, or number one, we select this one and we hit enter. Then we'll get a screen that looks like this. We need to turn this plot on, and we need to make sure that our x-axis is the first list and our y-axis is the second list. Otherwise, we won't graph the way we want to. Then, once we've set up our stat plot, we're going to hit this zoom key here, and we'll get a screen that looks something like this. We want to select the option zoom stat. Once we do that, we will get our scatter plot. And the scatter plot of our data looks something like this. This looks like it may be an exponential function. Or I would say this looks more like an exponential function than any other. Now that I've chosen an exponential function to model this data, I hit this second key again 
and I hit the zero because I want this catalog down here. In our Texas instrument in this catalog, we need to find the option Diagnostic On. If you select that, it will appear on your screen and then just hit enter. If we turn Diagnostic On, this will tell us how good of a model we have. Then our last step is to hit this stat button again, arrow over so we have the calculation menu and then we need to select exponential regression or EXP REG. We select exponential regression because that's the type of model that we selected, an exponential model. Exponential regression will show up on your screen like this. Just hit enter. And you should get a screen that looks something like this. Here, we're given the equation for our exponential model. Y is equal to A times B to the X power. Then we're given our A and our B values. So for this model, the number of zombies, Y, that's equal to 0 0.2887 times 4.836 to the x power, or the days, the number of days. This r squared and this r value tells us how good of a model we have. Look at this r value here, this 0.99767. The closer that this value is to 1, the better our model is. Our model here is almost 100% correct. It's 99% correct. Now, if we had chosen a different model, say a logarithmic model, then we would have had to select LN regression for log regression. And if we selected that, we would have got a screen that looked like this. Here is our equation, y is equal to a plus b times the natural log of x. And then we're given our a and our b values. But look at this r value. Here our value is 0 0.616. This model is only about 62% correct. Well remember, our data or our scatter plot look like an exponential graph not a logarithmic one. That's why we selected exponential, but if we had selected the wrong one or we were confused, we could look at these R values to determine what best suits our model. So we have our exponential model, y is equal to a times b to the x power. We have our a and our b values. Our model is a very good one. It's 99% correct or 99.7% correct. So if we want to find how many zombies there will be on day 14, we're just going to use this model. Remember, this is y is equal to 0 0.28878 times 4.836 to the x power. Now y is our number of zombies and x is our time. So all I have to do is plug in 14 for x. So I have y is equal to 0 0.28878 times 4.836 to the 14th power. If we solve this for y, we're going to find y is equal to 1,105,221,763. So by day 14 in our zombie apocalypse, there are already over 1 billion zombies. So let's try this again. Here we got some data that represents the percentage of the world's population that has been turned into a zombie during our fictional zombie apocalypse. 
Create a mathematical model that fits this data, and then determine how long before 50% of the world's population is a zombie. So here's our data, and at day three, a very small percentage of the world's population is a zombie. But by day 14, about 42% of the world's population is a zombie. And then by the end of the month, day 30, almost the entire world has been turned into a zombie. So let's try to build a model that fits this data. Our first step is to enter our data into our modeling software. Then we want to create our scatter plot, just like we did before. So here's my scatter plot, and this one appears to look like this. So I would say that this is most likely a logistic model. I believe it's a logistic model because it appears to approach this minimum value and then it goes up and then it seems to level out at this maximum value. This may not be a logistic model though, it may be a logarithmic model. I could say that this looks something like this. So possibly this is a logarithmic model. And we can try both. If you think this data follows a logarithmic model, then select LN regression, and you'll get a screen that looks something like this. If you think this is a logistic model, then select logistic, and you'll get a screen that looks something like this. First, let's look at our logarithmic model. Here we have an R value of 0.91, which is pretty good. That means this model is about 91% accurate. It's in the form of Y is equal to A plus B times the natural log of X, and we're given our A and our B values. If we have a logistic model, you'll notice that we don't have any R values here. That's because of how R is calculated. You cannot calculate an R value for a logistic model. But one thing you can look at are these coefficients. If you've studied logistic models, you know that this value of C is a maximum value, or the maximum value of our model. Here, C is 98.46. So that means that the maximum value, or 98.46% of the population can become zombies. The rest cannot. Well, that's pretty close to 100%. So I would say this is a pretty good model, as well as this logarithmic model, because 91% is pretty good as well. So let's see what kind of answers we get for both. And let's start with the logarithmic model. We want to know how long before 50% of the world's population is a zombie. Well, remember that the percentage of the population we said was y, because we graphed it on the y axis in our scatter plot. Now, this is equal to our a value, which is a negative 86.08. Plus our B value, which is 53.44 times the natural log of X. Well, X is time, so that's what we're looking for. Now, 50% of the world's population is a zombie, then at this point, Y is equal to 50%. So I have 50 is equal to negative 86.08 plus 53.44 times the natural log of x. Now if I want to solve this, I would have to add 86.08 to both sides. I'd end up with a 136.08 is equal to 53.44 times the natural log of x. Divide both sides by 
and I would get the natural log of x is equal to about 2.55. Now if I want to solve this for x, I have to rewrite it as an exponential equation. This is the same as saying e to the 2.55 is equal to x. Solve that for x, and x is equal to approximately 12.8. So it would take about 12.8 days for 50% of the population to become a zombie. Now let's compare that to what we would have gotten with our logistic model. Here we have y is equal to c over 1 plus a times e to the negative bx power. A is 502.4, B is 0.41, and C is 98.46. So our percentage of the population that's zombies is equal to 98.46 over 1 plus 502.4 times E to the negative 0.41x. Now why? This is 50, because 50% 50 of the population is a zombie. Now we need to solve this for x, so I'm going to multiply both sides by this denominator. I'll have 50 times 1 plus 502.4e to the negative 0.41x is equal to 98.46. Divide both sides by 50, and I'll have 1 plus 502.4e to the negative 0.41x is equal to 1.97. Subtract 1 from both sides. And I'll have 502.4 times e to the negative 0.41x is equal to 0.97. Divide both sides by 502.4. And I'll have e to the negative 0.41x. Well, that's equal to 0.0. .0 0.0039, approximately. Now I have to rewrite this as a logarithmic expression to get this variable out of my exponent. So I can say that the natural log of 0.0039 is equal to negative 0.41x. Divide both sides by negative 0.41 and I'll get x is equal to 13.5 days. So because we used a different model we ended up with a slightly different answer but both are about 13 days. So really we could have modeled this data either way. So that's how you create models, or exponential and logarithmic models, for data that you're given, whether it's about population growth, radioactive decay, or the zombie apocalypse. And that completes the tutorial on modeling using exponential and logarithmic functions.